You don't look like Anthony. Oh, no you look like Malcolm. <laughs> from Hold on. Malcolm from Palmer's Cafe. So question, where did you get DJ Yellow Tunes from? Is it because of the color? Normally when people first see me, the first thing they would say is yellow if they don't know my name. Yeah, that's the stereotype you right. be in. Yeah, yeah, so. Bobo, yellow, bigs. Yeah, like stuff mm -hmm. like that. Ugly man. But then the way he is coming after that. I was ugly man. You was ugly man? Yeah. Growing up, they got me with that. And my grandfather, while he was alive, God rest his soul, he used to call me two months, so I kept the name because after he died, I just wanted to, you know, continue on a legacy where he had started with me. So you got your start when? On a taking it serious level, I'd say like about 2016. But when was the first time you actually had that moment that, you know what, I, I feel like I want to be a DJ? Um, I stayed home from school one day. You duck school one day. I duck school one day. Um, oh my God, brother. <laughs> but he just used to duck school for no reason. <laughs> just cause. He was never done type to stay home and play game or just do nothing. He would go and try to be some kind of person making some money somewhere. He's like, also like He would ride jet ski one day. Next day he want to put rock on the back of the truck. You know, take it to the dump or something like that. Just random stuff where we could put money in his pocket. I ain't gonna I used to just duck school and do the stupidness with him because I with him. But he stayed home one day and he just DJ on his desktop and that was the one thing that stick with me. But he was using virtual DJ home free. I remember oh, virtual free. DJ boy. <laughs> I used to DJ too. No my DJ name was. You look like, I can tell, let me tell you, let me give you something you look like now. You look like a... Uh, something good now. Loop? Loop? Yeah. I don't know. You you giving me it in or... My name was TJ Skeleton. Why? Y'all know about Harbour Hotel. I was on Harbour Hotel and I, they gave me a DJ job on my website. And all I had to do was double click the songs. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, don't forget to go to room 654. They're having a game and they're giving away a grand prize. This next song is coming in from Taylor Swift. Hey, I'm going in. I was a selector because I only used to select the songs. It makes sense. It makes sense now. Why? Yeah. It makes Why? sense now. Why? Yeah. You but DJ Skeleton. <laughs> I'm DJ Loop. So you was home, the virtual DJ, doing the mixes. Mm -hmm. You know, they had their, their presets. Don't you know, pump it up. Yeah, and then you put got your the hands up in the air, air put, put your hands up. And then when was the moment, the first big moment to actually professionally play on a big stage? Boy. A big moment like mass. They just throw you in on a big stage. Your on first one. First big job. You got thousands, hundreds of people who are going to be watching you, looking for good music. So Probably they can shake up they set. Probably with powder if I play no a bunch of Yeah, like Because like they want to shake up they set and, and they drink. And drunk. And they put this new boy. New boy. this set. Just get I color. Just... No set. <laughs> <laughs> they had this thing they used to do to promote the group. They mm -hmm. had this like. Um, luggage van, because that's what it was. Yeah. It was a luggage van and they would allow a DJ to set up his equipment in it and just drive around the island promoting uh, the event. carnival group and all the events, upcoming stuff like that. I was the DJ on the back of that truck. Who let you DJ? It was a group decision. The group decided that. Um, and I was working for Kingsman Collection. Okay. Where they offered DJ. Offer DJ yeah, uh -huh. so it was his luggage van. That's Mr. Nolan Carey. I would just DJ on the back of it. Promoting like specials, or we'd stop the different bars and stuff like that. Just licking off music. Just licking off music. So that day you was playing music, looking out to the crowd, what was going on in your head? My belly was racing. <laughs> I know your belly very yeah, down. Yeah, I just pump up myself. I was pumping up I just pump up myself and I'm nervous. But before I go on the stage, don't come around me. Whenever you come to a performance I'm doing, always notice my side of the stage to be clear. In the backstage. Yeah, before I started playing, another DJ was playing. Can't remember who it was. Gone up there. Gone up there. And? And I 
Press play. You didn't say nothing? I was playing with Super Mario. Okay. Super Mario was the mic man. He was actually hosting that night as well. So he introduced me as one of the new upcoming DJs. You like two dollars? Yeah, two dollars. You know, respect to Super Mario because to have him do that yeah. for somebody that's new, I respect that. I honestly look up to Super Mario right now. It's, it's a legend in the game, you know. After he introduced me, personally, he gave me a guideline to say, well, hey, stuff along these lines, yeah. you know, don't overdo it. We playing soccer. Kind of guide me. Okay. Yeah, guide me and say, well, hey, I stick to the soccer. And for that time, he was up there. It shell was, down. It was a shell. So, yeah. so what the shell means? People, the DJs just say that, ah, oh, shell out, shell out, come to this event, shell out. What shell mean? You know? Shell for me, as a DJ, mean we can carry on by, we can break this place up, we can. But what's the analogy of shell? A good time, I guess. Cool. It has nothing to do with the physical shell. Okay, right? just making sure. I thought I could have pieced something together. Lafayette, what is your biggest pet peeve in the Before DJ? we even get on that, let me ask you a question. It's like, you want to mention the shell. How? I can't compare you to the Kong would just be promoting online. You, you know what I mean, right? You which Kong you is right now. You know, it, it's it's in this moment that I reflect on me as a person. Because I'm genuinely being myself and this dude sitting over here, seeing a Kong talking to him. And that makes me <laughs> question. Who I am on a regular basis? Like, am I <coughs> come? That's what you see right now? No, I just asked. So you asked me who, which conk am I? Today, yeah. I just ask way. Task way. <laughs> As I was asking, <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve in the industry? One thing I don't like in the DJ game is. When, when DJs lowball the game, I don't like that. Like, we have that problem in the hosting thing as well. I feel like if you already sent out a quote for a job, of course, everybody's entitled to shop around. Go get your deal, go save some money. No, Fine. That's understandable, but why you as a DJ have to devalue yourself? Do you all have like a network where you all communicate? Did they have their group chats and stuff like that? But you want in a group chat? Nah, I don't want it. I ain't one, I know, I ain't one, and we kind of like, like one day one of them came in the group say, hey, from this point on y'all, any events, don't go lower than X, Y, Z. Because we're trying to build a rapport and respect that you can't get a, t a host for less than, are you ain't supposed to? So my next question for you would be, what was one of your worst performances? Story time. I can tell you mine too, if you want me to. Yeah, let me let me go first. Then. Like, I feel like <laughs> I was at this function at John Warren's. I knew within myself my laptop was having issues, and I was playing. It was a frat party. It was for Five Beta Sigma. I was playing, but just playing. I watching this crowd like interact. They like they can't all bad. Bongs and bongs. And the minute they going to change the song, my laptop black out. It's it. Quiet. You know women when running and they sister, what happened DJ? <laughs> DJ what happened? But that was one in the second time. So ironic it was another frat party. But, but this one was on an international scale because these were That's like these were people from abroad. The person that had booked me, we went over like a list of music that they wanted. And he was telling me he wanted basically everything off of beat. He wanted 80s hits, 90s hits, because it wasn't like the younger part of the fraternities and, and they had their wives with them as well. So it was, you know, nice dinner setting afterwards. You have the big shindig, the party, mm -hmm. so on. But I started playing what he asked me to play and I'm like, everybody just staring at me at this point. So I trying to figure out why, and this ain't no little bit of people. This was about probably over 350 people. I think in, this what they want here, so they waiting on like a part of the song to right. do something. Cause I know they like the step and all of that right, stuff. Right. But me using my discretion, I played a few line dancing songs because I know they like to do the stepping and stuff like that. You play like Cupid Shuffle Cupid, and like... Yeah. That's the only thing they For dance frat to. Party. Now hold on, now, I, mind you, I didn't get into the two step and all that, get jiggy with it and all that stuff here. And I just was playing something at that time to recover from what they had initially told oh, okay. me. They just were staring at me and they was like, where does TJ get this music from? Who gave you this list? And I was like, you called me? 
No, because I didn't even. He didn't even tell me his name. He He's smart, but he did He's not smart. tell me his name. And I'm like, I started. Um, one of the guys that was there, I know this buddy. Um, he is like, no, 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 you won't play the right thing. No, stop playing. No, for real, this is legit how you carry on. And I, I didn't even know what to say. Like I just stand there and I was like, I had to, I had yeah, to. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Yeah, uh -huh. because. You know what? He's coming he, at me like that. Did so he the professional tell you what to play? The man come there and say, "No, you doing this all wrong. Who hired you? Why are you playing this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that was the man." This was a list that I was given by whoever instructed this function. Let me do what I want to do, and that's when I went until like I tell you the two step yeah. and all of that stuff. And like then that. they start. And then they started, and I actually played wobble as well, and they was crazy for that. And I'm like. She was here to let me play this long yeah, time because yeah, that's what yeah. I wanted to do. But because you already gave me something to go by, you stake me up. As a host, I notice when you're DJing parties or events, there's always at least three people that come in to you to tell you, play this, play that. What does that do to you as a DJ? For me personally, it's based on the approach okay. that they give me. Well, one thing that I do, and I feel like you should do as a DJ is watch, babe. Mm -hmm. Watch your crowd, babe. Like, you should be able to see this person coming to you before they even Yeah. Because that's a part walking. of watching your crowd. Yeah. So sometimes I'd even see them hesitate, talk to their friend and be like, girl, you think I should really go to this DJ? Tell them, you know? So based off of that, I am able to tell them, well, based off of what I see and only you want this song. If I see like it's a mutual thing because I already watching them before they come, then I would Give them that request. Because you have people who will give you a song, say, man, you gotta play some Bonnie Button up. But you playing reggae right now. And then like four songs later, they come back. Don't forget, man, don't forget the running. Don't forget the running. They just need to understand, eventually, you may or may not go back to being man. You could still honor that request. Like, you could be playing reggae. This may be the heat of the party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, it depends on the event. Or you could say, well, special request. Mm -hmm. Okay. You so you throw it on them. This next song is special request coming from Malcolm. So if it's boom, they ain't looking at you like you just randomly play baby. I mean, regardless, you playing it so they can look at you like no, no baby. No way. Just come from baby. Malcolm. Everybody looking at Malcolm like baby. Really? He's bouncing. He's, you know what I mean? You won't come with Ronnie Butler right now. But DJ, why you listen to him? Why and then you point to him. That's Malcolm. No, because at the end of the day, the first thing they can hit you with is play this nigga and pay you to play this song. How you get playing this song? Okay, so walk us through preparation for a gig. Somebody book you, hey Friday come in, um, I need you from 7 to 11 at this party. Walk us through the preparation for an event. Get up. That's important. <laughs> no, for true, you can't take yeah, like, on the gig unless you get up. Yeah, you gotta get up. You understand what I mean? That is that is very vital. They get up. Process. For me, like, I, I ain't just saying this, but I do pray every morning. For me, like, because... Could be switched. I don't know if it's just me. Could be switched. <laughs> Could be switched to background, please. You really want to do this, eh? Could be switched to background, <laughs> please, Ted. Say that part again. <laughs> Okay. I think I need some more water. Come on. Um, but for real, I wake up every morning. I give God thanks and praise, bro. For real, because like... <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but you don't feel like your day is be incomplete without praying. Like, personally, I feel like when I get up, if I don't pray, either something is gonna happen to me or I can get some bad news yeah. or something can come true what I had planned yesterday. Like, or even if it's just a slump in my day, it could yeah. be anything, but I feel like it normally happens because I didn't pray. I could be wrong when I just say that's no, my personal yeah, feeling. Yeah. And then park my vehicle because I wanna set up that I make sure everything is set, I do my sound check. That's why I ask my clients in advance, hey, well, what's a good time that I can come here to make sure, you know, everything is in order. Once that's done, I go home and I try to relax, make sure my music is in order for my event and then I come back and do my thing. Shella. Shella. Not the physical shell. No, just the physical yeah. lock, the old thing shell. How do you determine how much speakers you need? Determine how much noise you're trying to make. I know the equipment I have. If you tell me like it's a party for like 50 to 75 people, I only bring in one speaker. But if you say it's outdoor, you I might bring two. Yeah. So what brands do you rock with? 
with endurance and speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Mic, speaker. Okay, yeah. let's go. Mics. Sure. Speakers. Yeah. Soundboard. I use Pioneer. Laptop. Macbook. And that's your ideal setup. What's the biggest stage you would want to perform on? Other than like a dance square event. You ever heard of Rolling Loud? Yeah, yeah. Um, I fall down in school one time. Like down some stairs, I roll down those stairs. <laughs> the whole school went over the, but that was right. Anyway, yeah, I'd want to be like uh, DJ for Rolling Loud for one of the celebrities. I can't wait to see it. Hey. You know, I, don't know, I say, that. you know, when the is get big, I say, that's my cousin, bro. That's Anthony, I know he really need. <laughs> <laughs> I know he really need. So every DJ have a tagline, a drop. What is your drop? <laughs> oh, you have a drop from Chronic. You have a drop from Chronic? Yes, yeah, so so You press the button. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, we rocking today with DJ Yellow Dunes. Yo, select the Chronic. Why I say make up DJ Yellow Dunes? <laughs> you know how to take over better. You know how to He's laughing at that when he said I got to say it just like him do. How he said I'm. You laugh, so I'm assuming he laughed when you said That means he don't take you serious. Yeah, so don't so laugh. So how are you doing? So really, trick to one. I'll just play. I can play a voice note. Okay. No, I'm you really should know your tag. I just say my tag. I press the button. Go. Say the tag. Yo, select the chronic. What? <laughs> 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 Why you warming? That's it. No, okay. Why well, say big up DJ Yellow Tunes? Yo, you know how the thing go, my brother. You know how the thing set. The whole team. <laughs> you know what? Whatever. That was Whatever. insane, bro. You okay. Lost, right? If you wasn't DJing, what you would have been doing? I would have been. <laughs> but you get depressed. Like, okay, a life without DJ. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. No, but like a life without DJ, right? Um. Well, I was aiming towards being a music teacher. Oh, that's dope. You're into music. Yeah. Which instrument? From the one. A little bit of the behind I play the I play the sax. That's not the same. I play the sax, which yeah. means it's not the same. No, I thought you dabbed me to say like it was like some kind of mutual, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and and all the instruments are part of the band? Yeah, but I okay. thought you, no, I thought you were saying like you played a, the trombone as to why you dab me and then you said sax. So I was like, oh, you know? No, I play the saxophone. Okay, that's cool. Who teach you? How to play the trombone? Mm -hmm. Giovanni Clark. Giovanni, my boy. I learned from Mr. Justilian. Mr. Justilian White. Mm. You know, Mr. Justilian at the She's at she is at now at Anatol Rogers. Yeah, I know. She is? Yeah. I go here right now. Who took over and teach you like more? It was just Giovanni? Yeah. Do you still play trombone? I could, but I don't. Same. Yeah. Same, I just described Joe. Mm. I just, just press DJ, a button. Yeah. I, I don't think, I think it's way more than press a button. Scratch it. Every, every. See, look at him trying to downplay it now. Look at every, it, you. Every, but you know how hard I is working on that mic? You always be in the back there. Backing you up, for sure! <laughs> Backing you up, nigga! Bro, One thing I love is a DJ who is watch, who timing straight, like right after we finish talking, they like, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after a short break. Music drop. I look at them and they... You think that's hard to find? In, in hosting, way, right, I scared a variety of DJs. A you of DJs out there who barely behind the laptop at the event, so when I finish and I say, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as you enjoy your food, enjoy some music, and I'll be back in just a moment. I'll go over to the DJ booth, DJ in the corner. But you know it's so crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> and imaginary. On a real level, it has shocked me to know how not respected, I think DJs are though. Do you think the ones who are really respected are the ones that are popular? No. That's how I feel. I just feel like... Certain names you hear, you like, oh yeah, okay. But other, other ones, if you want I a mean, household name, they ain't expecting much from you. They ain't really on your run. But, mm -hmm. like I've seen stuff like that happen to DJs. You know? Unrespected, why are you charging so much? Like, 
Why are you even charging this period? That's <laughs> tough. Yeah, but yeah, but like. Do DJs know there's a difference between event DJing and party DJ? They should. A lot of DJs don't. They can't party till after party. They talk and they can't on party. But at the actual event, the two hour event when you're hosting, no support, no backup. It goes with knowing your, your lean as a DJ. Like when I first started DJing, like one of my mentors is DJ Fines. And the first question he asked me was, what kind of DJ I wanted to be? And I didn't know what he meant by that. He was saying, um, do I want to be a DJ that is being booked privately and making more money? Mm -hmm. Or a DJ on the flyer that is sharing the money within other DJs and having to compete, you know? Right. Of course, I picked my route because yeah, I don't be yeah, on the flyers yeah. and stuff like that, you know? And my lane is actually working for me, and I feel like I have to be more vigilant in what's happening because I have to now probably work with a host or hostess. So I have to know how to make sure everything is working properly, make sure I know my range of how far the mic can go so I can tell them. Like it's, yeah. it's a whole lot and sometimes it even goes back down to if I want to do a wedding. I have a sheet now where it helps my clients who doesn't even have a wedding planner mm -hmm. know how their reception should run. Have you ever dealt with a situation where you charge someone for an event, it's supposed to be seven to nine, they start at 8.30, so you have to go till 10, 10, 30 ish. Do you go and charge them more at the end? Do you let it slide? Do you still stick within your time and once that 10 o'clock reach you say, all right, well. Normally when I do a job, I don't try to overwork myself. Like knowing as a DJ, yeah, you could take more than one job a day. But I don't normally require myself to take on more than one job because I know I dedicate my time to this one job. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, it's different for you. No your way, host. no so way. I shouldn't know. From you show up, Jeez. from you show up, you picking up your mic, you do your thing. Your time is your time. As for me, I gotta worry about breaking all of this down, setting all of this up. So if I were to go by my time, plenty of people wouldn't book me. What's your favorite genre of music to play? I like hip hop and a little bit of R&B. Why hip hop and R&B? Oh no, instead of like the hymn music, seeing everybody sculling or, or soca music, everybody that way. You know what I mean? Um, or reggae music, everybody. Mm. I feel like that's safe. I call it safe music. Okay. I call hip hop and R&B safe music. Like you could play that anywhere. You could get away with playing that kind of music anywhere. Mm -hmm. You could start a party with that. You could even be in the highlight of the party and I've seen it. I've watched DJs play. Can we talk? Can we at 12 midnight? And the crowd go stupid. I've seen what hip hop and R&B can do, but for me personally, I call it safe music. It's like, I could last the longest in that genre. Yeah. Because there's so much so you can play much. older that. There was a stigma that once you have Bohemian music at a party, you know, party over. Do you think that still exists? That's, that was a stigma? Yeah, but <laughs> if you to a party and it reach around 11, 11.30 and you start to hear some na, 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 everybody be like, yeah, time to go home. I feel like it's changed, but I want to see your view. I feel um, like because we love our music now I would, with the new artists. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say everybody like Bahamian music now because even some of the artists, they would sing a Bahamian song on a soca beat and consider it Bahamian. Yeah, yeah, but you don't hear the actual song. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So. And you feel like there needs to be more appreciation for the Bahamian music? I feel like we should have it, yeah, but it's not my field. <laughs> Waste of time. My job is to play what y'all give people. me to play. Yeah, I, I can play what you give me to play. For the people, um, right quick, other than DJing, what else do you do? I have a rental company mm -hmm. um, just launched. It's called Toon City Entertainment. What I'm trying to get into is more event staging and lighting and also, like I say, equipment rentals and stuff. So mm -hmm. I do t-shirt printing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that business is called Yellow Tunes Graphics and Vinyl. I do laptop covers. <laughs> but you are I do me. laptop covers for you are me. most of you are you <laughs> Hey, hey, wait. Yes, great. I understand. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, wait. Hey, don't, don't disconnect it. 
What else do I try to do? I used to do car lighting. Car light? Yeah, like, like the side to... doors, the headlights. Yeah, so. that company was called Ultra Glow. Um, I used to do the ambiance lights inside, like in the roof. I had a Dodge Ram 1500, and what mm -hmm. I did with that was so I had a light bar that changed colors okay. from my cell phone, and my headlights did it as well. So I used to use my car as the pro car to show people that I could actually do car lights. Entrepreneur. So. Yeah, that was before I even started DJing. Though. So, um, next five years, where do you see yourself with your DJing? In the next five years, I want to launch another company. I don't want to talk too much about don't it. Don't get the yes. details now. No, no, yeah, no, no. but I have plans to launch something that I think is going to be very good for Bahamian artists. I agree. That's going to be big. But the plan is to be that bridge for Bahamian artists to now be as international as they not only like feel but could be. Okay, and how can people find you? They want to book you, um, they want to book your services from one of your business or just a DJ experience because you don't just come to DJ, you just, you just give an experience. experience. How can they find you? Um, well, you can check out my website www.djlotools.com. You can find me on Facebook at Yellow Tunes IG <laughs> at Yellow Tunes Graphics and Vinyl Tune City or DJ Yellow Tunes. Right. High five, my space. We need to stay current. We need to. <laughs> what? That's not good. Yes. You, you my use space. that. You have no, an account? No. Okay, so what? What? I just want you to expand your wings. You gotta be visible. You gotta be seen. You can find me on SoundCloud because I don't know what this <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. You can find me on SoundCloud at, at DJ Yellow Tones. And that's where they can go to listen to your mixes yeah, as well? Yeah, most of my mixes as well until I get my YouTube platform off of the ground. Um, I'm in current work with that as well. So. Awesome. It was a pleasure, Mr. Yellow Tones. Hope to see you grow. Hit him up and follow him to see the journey, to see what he come up with, and to book the professional for all your DJing needs, whether it be a wedding, baby shower, corporate event, award show, funeral, bite. I want to give him bite. He could, he could rock some music and... No. Bite? You need to expand. That's, that's what I'm getting out of this interview. You need to expand. Family's talking to small, small, but you don't get out. <laughs> Ha ha ha!